Hi everyone, welcome back for July's energy and solar update video. Yep, I'll talk through all of the solar generation statistics, our house usage, our heating, hot water, charging the electric car, all of that great stuff. So all of the energy numbers that you can compare to to see how you're doing with your systems. I do like to see all those comments uh, in the description below about what systems you have got, what size of systems and how it compares and whereabouts in the world or country you are. Uh, we're over here in Norfolk on the east side of the UK and it's been... It's been a bit dull really. First half of July was un-July like and the second half was about normal. It's turned out to be an average sort of solar generation month but it, you know, it hasn't been great, it's been a bit dull. So to liven things up one of the things I want to talk to you about and give you statistics for is the payback calculation. So yes I do keep a spreadsheet and keep an idea of how much money we're saving through having all of these electronic systems including our Mixergy hot water tank and I'd like to have a look at how we're doing on the payback. How close are we to paying back all of our system and also just the solar panels how close are we so we'll do that in the video as well anyway let's get over to the statistics for the month of july despite having 9.2 kilowatts of solar panels on our roof garage and east facing gable we're still importing from octopus energy on the intelligent go tariff it still feels odd importing 600 kilowatt hours in July when we have so many solar panels, but it's because it's only 7 pence per kilowatt hour to import it, and we get paid 15 pence to export it. So it's more profitable to sell the electricity to the grid than it is to actually self-consume it. Comparison why 600 kilowatt hours is a bit less than last month, but pretty similar to May. So we're bang on target for this time of year with our house usage. To pay for that 600 kilowatt hours that we imported, we exported our excess solar energy, almost 937 kilowatt hours of it. We're accumulating a nice credit now, ready for those winter months where we won't have as much solar energy and we'll be importing more for our heating costs. So that's £42 cost, £140.53 credit, and a total credit on the bill of £98.53 for the month, going towards winter bills. Given that uh, our December-January bill might be around £70, just that one month of excess solar is paying for one of the worst months of the winter. Year to date, we're on track for paying for all of our winter usage as well. So we have a, a net zero bill for energy for the entire year. We've spent £267.61 so far with those 3,823 kilowatt hours. And we've made £664.18 from the 4,427 kilowatt hours exported. Total credit, £396.57 for the year to date so far. That 937 kilowatt hours that we exported is actually 91% of what we generated from our solar panels. 1,028 kilowatt hours generated for the month of July. As I said in the introduction, a month of two halves, with the first half of July having quite a few days generating less than 20 kilowatt hours. The breakdown for that is 292 kilowatt hours for our solar edge array. That's 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels with a 2 kilowatt inverter. The 2.5 kilowatt inverter that we have for the east facing gable panels and the three panels over the garage roof, that was 224 kilowatt hours. And our main array, the 3.9 kilowatts south facing on the main roof with the 3.68 kilowatt inverter, that generated 512 kilowatt hours. Compare those numbers to other Julys and it looks like it's not the worst and not the best by a long shot. So pretty much an average July overall. Just one more high summer month where we might expect one megawatt hour of generation and then it's going to start to decline for autumn. For comparison to your own system, the number of kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels installed that we generated in July was 131.28 for the 3.9 kilowatts of panels, then 77.24 kilowatt hours for the 2.9 kilowatts of solar panels that we've got east facing and over the garage, a lot more shade on that one, and the solar edge south facing 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels, 121.67 kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels installed. 
The reason this is a good comparison is because it's of the different orientations of the panels, whether they're facing north, south, east or west, or whether you're in Scotland or Somerset, all those sort of things will mean that you'll generate a different amount of energy per kilowatt of solar panels, depending on all of those factors. So it's useful to compare to these ones to see my south facing panels. How does that compare to your east or your west facing? It doesn't matter whether you beat the number or not. It's just expectation and understanding the difference that you have, understanding how much shape you have and how much that's impacting things is a really good comparison number to make sense of your own system. Moving on to energy consumption then and using the My Energy chart for that, the eddy which heats our hot water into our Mixergy hot water tank used 55.2 kilowatt hours. That's actually quite good. Normally it's around 60 kilowatt hours or a little bit more. But before we put the Mixergy tank in, it was well over 100. So we're making a good energy saving hot water wise. Quite a high month for electric car charging on the Zappi, 400.7 kilowatt hours. Most of that came from the grid on the early hours using the Octopus Intelligent Go tariff, but a little bit with solar because we're getting so much solar first thing in the morning on those east-facing panels. We had a few overnight stops in the month of July as well where we public charged, but this was on a free charger with the bed and breakfast that we stayed at. That was another 120 kilowatt hours. A little over 2,000 miles travelled in the two cars, and all for free. Now, I really do have to pinch myself for that sometimes. You know, all this energy for free and running the house for free is great, but two cars as well, 2,000 miles in a month, and we're not paying for any of the fuel. I can hear the naysayers in the comments already tapping hard on the keyboards, saying it's not for free. You've paid for those solar panels. You've got to deduct that. So what's the payback? Maybe this is a good point to review the payback. How much have we saved and how much did they cost? Lots of numbers to digest here, but over on the right-hand side, £9,754.92 is the estimate of what I think we've saved so far with all of our solar battery and mixergy tank being installed that does exclude the petrol savings diesel savings i'm only comparing like for like on electricity on average we do about twelve thousand miles a year so at 50 miles per gallon and one pound 45 for a liter of petrol or diesel whichever it was that comes to roughly 1500 pounds a year also that we're saving and of course, no gas or oil for heating because we've gone electric as well with our air-to-air -air heat pump system. Okay, so here's how much we've spent on all the components. The solar panels went in in three different stages, 3,500, 3,100, and then 2,875 for the last one. In total, that comes to 9,573 including the watt node meter that I added for the solar edge inverter, that comes to almost identically the same amount that we've saved so far, £9,750. I'm sure the naysayers will look at the total there of 26600 is the total of what I've spent, but I needed to change the hot water tank anyway. That had failed, or bits of it had, and uh, I was going to replace the heating system as well. I didn't want the oil boiler. We hadn't serviced that for four to five years, so we made a good saving on that as well. So getting rid of some of these systems has made savings that I haven't included on here. So I'm very, very happy that Within four to five years, we've now paid for the solar panels. Add another four to five years, the battery should be paid for. Then a few more years after that, everything will be comfortably paid for, in my mind anyway. Okay, let's move on from payback. It's not the most exciting thing. Let's get on to consumption then. The Zappi from the grid, 378.5. It did say 400 though on the My Energy app, so I'm not sure why that's different. The Eddy, 55 kilowatt hours. That is the same as what the My Energy app said, so that's good news. Toshiba air conditioning, so that is our aircon, not heating, 54.55 kilowatt hours up slightly from the previous month. It has been warm and humid, so we have had the air conditioning on a little bit more. Kitchen sockets for all of our cooking needs, everything in the kitchen, 48.92 kilowatt hours. The TV in the lounge, 17 kilowatt hours. And the main induction hob, which is on the cooker circuit, that's 11.28 kilowatt hours. And lastly, all of our internet stuff. So the internet router, the My Energy Hub, and the Home Assistant Hub, 9.67 kilowatt hours. 
temperature wise so you can understand what we've been doing with air conditioning these are all of the sensors throughout the house you can see in the first half of july you know most of the rooms didn't go above 20 degrees that's including the loft and the garage but in the second half of july yeah temperatures increased a lot the loft and the garage went a bit wild up to nearly 30 degrees but we in the house stayed quite cool at just above 20 degrees this graph is quite interesting with just two sensors, one showing inside with air conditioning, one showing outside. So that's the loft temperature. So that's showing solar gain as well. So this is how hot our room would get, especially in the south facing rooms, if we didn't have air conditioning. But the lounge there, not going much above 20 degrees most of the time. So it really does show the impact of air conditioning. In fact, we can see that, can't we? If we just look at the guest room temperature, which is south facing, we'll see the solar gain in the orangey brown color. Temperatures rising up to 24, 25 degrees with lots of sunshine. And yet the lounge temperature staying nice and cool at just above 20 degrees. So you really can see the difference that's being made with our air conditioning system. Okay, if you're familiar with my statistics, you'll know that it's the blue area I'm looking at here for the battery usage. The scale on the right-hand side is the battery state of charge and how full the battery is. So if it goes up to 100, we've recharged it to 100%. And if it comes down to the 40-50% mark, that's when we've emptied half of the battery overnight. Now, I haven't been exporting a huge amount, so we haven't been using the battery a huge amount. And with so much solar energy during the day, we haven't been using the battery very much at all. So yeah, only a few days where we've gone down to 50%. Lots more capacity which will get used more over the winter period. Although the My Energy app might not be accurate for generation, export and import, it's still useful for tracking consumption. So this is showing 190 kilowatt hours consumption from solar and total consumption of 809 kilowatt hours as you know that we consumed 600 kilowatt hours from the grid. So 190 to 200 kilowatt hours of solar consumed. It really isn't a lot. It's just the base load during the day, just ticking over. We're trying to use as much energy as we can from the grid because it's cheaper to do that. So a useful chart, even though it says we're 24% green, I actually know we're a lot greener than that. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave me the comment below on how you're getting on with your systems as well. I do look for those and look for the comparison. It's great for me to see how our system's doing by comparison, to see whether there are any issues. Sometimes you do think, don't you? You think, it's a bit low. Is it me? Do I need to wash the panels? Has it just been dull? You think, is there a problem with my system? And it's when you compare to other people and you see comparable systems with comparable numbers and yes, they're slightly down this month as well. All of that sort of thing is reassuring. So the more information you can share, the more people that share, the better we all feel about our own numbers. And of course, we're always slightly jealous of that uh, person that has a bigger system than us and that had better weather than us or more generation. So uh, yeah, always think there's someone that doesn't yet have solar. So we're all better off than those, aren't we? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoy these videos. Take care. See you again soon for more energy related stuff. Bye for now.